These are the people that receive and walk in the power of the Spirit. People who are unimportant in their own eyes are able to push aside their self to walk in His self. That's not proper English, but that's the way the Spirit of God gave it to me. Those who are unimportant in their own eyes, uh, we love not our lives to the death, Paul writes. Those who are unimportant in their own eyes are able to push aside their self to walk in His self. Colossians 1.26 this is where Paul talks about this mystery of the ages, the Spirit of God indwelling the sons of God. Even the mystery which has been hidden from past ages and generations, but now is revealed to his saints. To them, God would make known what is the glorious riches of this mystery among the nations. It is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Did you hear what he said? He said, among the nations, and this is referring back to Galatians 3, 13 and 14, what we just read, where it says the blessing of Abraham is going to come on the nations and that they might receive the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So the baptism, remember they we're talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit today, is the receiving of the promise of the Father and the unveiling of the mystery of the ages, Christ in you. Receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit is pushing yourself aside to take on His self. Many speak in tongues or claim the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but they do not demonstrate the traits of someone who has pushed their self aside to walk in His self. And this is why I read in Acts chapter 2, the immediate signs of people who were baptized in the Holy Spirit. They pushed self aside. And a lot of times people have a hard time speaking in tongues after they've received the baptism. Unable to push self aside. They've been so used to serving self, now they've got to push it aside and operate in someone else's spirit. Yeah, it's called surrender. It's called denying self. It's called dying to self. Um, Paul said this in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things because of Christ who strengthens me. Uh, that's the, uh, all these are modern English version, except I want to read one out of the Weist version. He says, I am strong for all things in the one who constantly infuses strength in me. What is Paul talking about here? The one who constantly infuses strength in me. He is speaking of the baptism of the Holy Spirit in fire, being indwelled with the spirit of might, the spirit of dominion, that might would begin to emit from you, overcoming all things, okay? That's the one of the benefits of the Holy Spirit. As someone who pushes self aside to live in his self, they are not easily rattled. They are not easily troubled. They are not shaken, Jesus said. All right? Luke 9, 23. Then he said to them all, If anyone will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever will save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. Now, this is the same. I'm going to read the same scripture here. In the Weiss translation, and it's going to say it a little bit differently, but it, it kind of uh, unfolds or unpacks the meaning. This is the Weiss, Luke 9, 23. And he was saying to all, assuming that anyone desires to come after me as a follower of mine, let him disregard his own interests. Hear that, American church, Western world church? Let him disregard his own interests. And let him at once, at once for all, pick up and carry his cross day after day. <clears throat> let him take the same road with me that I take as a habit of life. For whoever desires to save his soul life shall ruin it, but whoever will declare a sentence of death upon his soul life for my sake shall save it. Your soul life, your self life, is in competition with his self. You must push it aside. And you must deny it the right to influence you. Your self life or your soul life is at odds with God and must be brought 
into submission to his self that is in you. So let's wrap it up here. Let's just kind of say some closing thoughts and we'll pray. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is God living in you. But you must push aside your self-life or your soul life, all things that make up your consciousness, and allow the Holy Spirit to completely dominate you. When this happens, you start to overcome all things. This is the will of God for your life. To overcome all things. You start to overcome desires of the flesh. You start to overcome old mindsets that hinder you. And you, have, you begin to have wisdom and understanding. And wisdom and understanding begins to unfold in you regarding what is hindering you from maturing in the fullness of Christ. We say it again. This baptism of the Holy Spirit gives you wisdom and understanding. And it unfolds to you things that are hindering you from maturing in the fullness of Christ. The baptism of the Holy Spirit also begins to become a driving force to overcome evil, sickness, death, and all things that oppose the kingdom of God. This looks like courage. This looks like boldness seen through speech and action. You begin to walk in His nature, which is the true key to overcoming all things. There is no fear in His nature, right? There is no timidity in His nature. There is no regard for the opinions of man in His nature, and there is no compassion for the devil in His nature. There is only compassion for those who have been bound by the enemy of our God and who spring into action, speaking and doing that uh, people might be set free from their captivity, coming into the fullness of the image of Jesus Christ being conformed into that likeness by having their sins canceled and by receiving the Spirit of the living God to dwell in them. This is our main concern. This is our main priority that we begin to consume all nations, begin to consume all kingdoms with this true authority, with this true power, with this true calling as sons of God who have been conformed into His image, to whom no thing is impossible, to whom overcomes all things, to whom at you know when we lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. When we lay hands on the dead or speak to the dead, they will get up. When we cast out demons, they do go. This is the nature of God. And this is our nature through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Walking in His nature is acting like He would act in all things. Walking in His nature, in God's nature, is acting like He would act in all things. In the last scripture here, 1 Corinthians six seventeen, But he who joins himself to the Lord is one spirit with him. That word in the Greek for join is like to weld or to glue or, be, or to became, become made one with. You know, uh, in the context, it's in the context of uh, human intimacy through marriage, okay? But this is talking about intimacy with God. He who joins himself to the Lord. God has done everything on your behalf and for your benefit to be joined to his spirit. Now you do the work. Join yourself to the Lord. Focus. Let go of all the weights and sins that easily hinder you. Become, become baptized and overflowing with the spirit. Uh, speaking in tongues, praying in tongues, pursuing these things, devoting yourself to set people free. Becoming one with God is joining yourself to His Spirit. You have a part to play in this, but it is His Spirit working in you and through you to accomplish it. People who never learn how to uh, become dominated by the Spirit or who refuse to become dominated by His Spirit lack true wisdom and understanding in the, in the things of the Spirit. They are never, never able, they are ever learning uh, but never able to come to the knowledge of truth. They are never able to truly begin to overcome. They are never, never able to truly grasp and be illuminated with the truth of the Word of God. Therefore, the outward uh, experience that they have in life 
is, is not one that represents Jesus Christ, okay? And we have been called into uh, this, um, this great calling, this high calling in Christ Jesus, that we would be his ambassador, that we would be his sons, that we would be the brothers of Jesus Christ, having been made just like him, that, that everything that Jesus did to become a curse for us was for the purpose of receiving the indwelling of the Spirit of God, the promise of the Father. So that is the baptism of the Holy Spirit in context of God's long-range plan concerning His sons, concerning His kingdom, and concerning His Son, Jesus Christ. The overarching purpose is that all things would be summed up in Christ, in heaven and in earth. And at some point, uh, as we do our job here, Jesus is going to return. We're going to receive indestructible bodies, and everything in heaven and earth will be transformed and be made new. Corruptibility, corruptible will put on incorruptible. Everything will be set to right. And we are in that process now of setting all things right in heaven and earth because we have been seated with him far above all principality and power, all rule and dominion. And we have the same authority and the same ability as Jesus Christ. In fact, it says when Jesus said, you shall receive power... Uh, to be my witnesses, it means miraculous ability. So therefore, we no longer have any excuse. The only excuse we have is a selfish, self-centered mind that refuses to release, be released from the things of this world, from the things of self, and to pursue the kingdom of God. You have got to make a choice now that you must at all costs partner with the Holy Spirit who puts to death the desires of the flesh, who puts to death the desires of uh, trend, you know, that come around self, that you could become someone who gains the mind of Christ, the same mindset. This is a mindset of a soldier on a mission. This is a mindset of someone who's focused on one goal alone. And these are the ones that are the glorious sons of God on the earth. These are the ones who have been given all things in, in Christ and who overcome all things. In Jesus' name. So if you have never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, or uh, you, you are not sure, or uh, you just need to be filled again, that's all great and all fine, all legal. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I just lay my hands on you in faith. And I say, receive the promise of the Father now. Be filled head to toe. Right now, in the name of Jesus, overflowing with the Holy Spirit and fire, in the name of Jesus, so be it.